We are Ethan Su, Philip Vaselsky, and Ikai Zhao, and today we will be talking about the Doppler effect and how we can observe it through a pendulum contraption. So, first of all, what is the Doppler effect? The Doppler effect is a phenomenon that occurs when there is a relative motion between a source of sound and an observer. It describes the perceived change in frequency of a sound wave due to this motion. When a source of sound is moving towards an observer, the sound waves emitted by the source get compressed or squeezed together in the direction of motion. This compression results in an increase in the frequency of the sound waves, leading to a higher perceived pitch. Conversely, when the source is moving away from the observer, the sound waves get stretched out or spread apart in the direction of motion. This stretching causes a decrease in the frequency of the sound waves, resulting in a lower perceived pitch. To understand this effect, consider an example of a moving ambulance with its siren on. As the ambulance approaches an observer, the sound waves it emits are compressed. This compression results in a higher frequency and a higher perceived pitch. Once the ambulance passes the observer and moves away, the sound waves become stretched, causing a lower frequency and a lower perceived pitch. The Doppler effect can be explained with the following formula, where f prime is the observed frequency in hertz, f is the source frequency in hertz, v is the speed of sound in meters per second, vs is the velocity of the source in meters per second, and vo is the velocity of the observer. Here we have the pendulum contraption used to observe the Doppler effect. The velocity of the pendulum can be modeled according to the following formula, which is derived from the energy formulas, where m cancels out to isolate for v, which is the velocity of the sound source or the pendulum, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and height is the height from the pendulum to the bottom of the pendulum. We have one phone, which has the Firefox Tone Generator app open, emitting a frequency of 500 Hz. This will be our source phone, which is also the pendulum bob in our experiment. It will be hung on a string like this. We also have an iPad with the Firefox Doppler effect open, which measures the change in frequency over time as the pendulum with the sound source is swung towards and away from it, producing a significant Doppler shift. This is placed at the bottom of the pendulum, simulating a stationary observer. The sound source phone is lifted to approximately 60 degrees to the horizontal. You might think why not just put it directly at the horizontal to have the maximum velocity, as it is also easy to line up, but the string contracts when it is let go at such heights, and the pendulum is more unreliable at these higher angles. The sound source is allowed to swing one cycle by a line of string before the Doppler effect application is started. The longer the string, the better, as the velocity of the pendulum increases with the length of the string. Listen closely. This is what the 500 Hz tone sounds like when the source is not moving. Now, as the source is swung on the pendulum, can you hear that how the sound changes as the phone swings from one side to another? This is how it sounds from our observer perspective. Now that you are done setting up the experiment, play the Firefox Doppler Effect and Firefox Tone Generator apps. Pause the Doppler Effect app once one swing is complete, then take a look at the graph it produces. You can see the difference in frequency clearly as the pendulum swings towards and away from the observer. The maximum point is when the sound source is at the point closest to the observer and moving towards the observer at close to the maximum velocity. The minimum point is when the sound source is at the point closest to the observer and moving away from the observer at close to the maximum velocity. Then, take the difference between the max and the min point and then divide that by 2. That is the average difference that the frequency changes for this specific trial. Export this to Excel to get the graph, then delete the beginning and end as it has background noise from the release and catch point of the pendulum. When we conducted this experiment, each frequency trial was repeated 10 times for a total of 30 trials across three different frequencies to better map the Doppler shift. Here is a graph of the results with the 400, 500, and 600 Hz trials respectively. As you can see, there, there is a clear Doppler shift within our data. The main graph that we produced includes all of the frequencies with the expected values next to each other. As you can see, there is definitely a noticeable Doppler shift in the data with a very high correlation value. As a disclaimer, our experiment wasn't perfect as shown by our data. Some errors we think affected the experiment are the possibility of a slight echo, which is most likely a negligible error. There was also the elasticity of the pendulum string, which was caught and has around 3-6% elasticity. This would increase the length of the string as you increase the velocity due to centripetal force. However, Usually this is only the case with much longer strings, and with our pendulum setup, this should be close to a negligible error. Another error we thought of was the horizontal transfer of energy. 
As the phone was let go, some energy which was used for the pendulum to move forward was transferred into the sideways kinetic energy. This also explains why trials were so inconsistent and frequently went up and down with all the frequencies. Next, we had an imperfect pendulum model. We had non-ideal conditions, and there were deformations due to the pendulum shape. Finally, if the angle affects the height of the pendulum and therefore the maximum velocity, it is possible that the angle of the pendulum could also be an error. In this experiment, a protractor was used to measure the angle after every trial, and it was deduced that the protractor was accurate enough to where the difference in the velocity between the trials did not stem from this error, and therefore it was deemed close to negligible in this particular case. For future applications, try to release the sound source or the phone in a more consistent way, and you can automize this by using a contraption so that there is less human interaction. A different pendulum could also be used, as the shape of a phone is not the best. In this video, you learned how the Doppler effect works and how it can be applied to real life. The Doppler effect in sound refers to the change in frequency or pitch of a sound wave as perceived by an observer when the source of the sound and the observer are in relative motion. When the source is moving towards the observer, the frequency appears higher, and when the source is moving away, the frequency appears lower. This principle was demonstrated using a pendulum contraption. Using this simple experiment, you demonstrate the Doppler effect to your students with classroom accessible materials and cell phones to collect data.